and welcome everyone. I hope you are well and doing great in your studies. And in this video, I am going to cover 10 important questions on forensic toxicology. And this is the part four of the series. And the topic that I'm going to cover is the corrosive poisons. And those who don't know me, I'm Amar, the founder of ForensicMCQ.com. And it is a platform where you will get MCQs on various forensic categories and also the previous year question papers of NTUGC net. So without any further delay, let's move to the question number one. So question number one says, what is the primary effect of mineral acids on the tissue? So mineral acids are the inorganic acids, for example, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acids. So these are the acids are categorized as a mineral acids. Now let's check the options. Option first is caseous necrosis. So caseous necrosis is a type of cell death, is a type of cell death in which the tissue acquires cheese-like structure. So it acquires cheese-like structure. So it is a type of cell death of a tissue in which a tissue acquires cheese-like structure. And it is typically seen in the tuber clauses. So it can't be the correct answer for this. Moving to the option second, that is liquefactive necrosis. So liquefactive necrosis is a type of cell death in which a tissue transforms into liquid vicious. So it is, it transforms into liquid vicious. And one of the common example is the bacterial infection. So in case bacterial infection, bacterial infection, liquefactive necrosis is seen. Moving to the option third, that is fat necrosis. So it is a type of cell death in which the tissue majorly involves the fatty tissue, for example, breast and pancreas. So for example, breast and pancreas. And the main cause of this uh, type of fat necrosis is the trauma. Is trauma uh, usually the blunt force trauma moving to the option four that is coagulative necrosis so coagulative necrosis is defined as the cell death due to the sudden loss of sudden loss of blood supply blood supply so the death of the tissues due to the sudden loss of blood supply are known as coagulative necrosis and the mineral acid do that so the correct answer for this question is option number four, cognitive necrosis. Now let's move to the question number second. Question number second says, what is the most common classification of burns by the mineral acid falls on? And here are the options. So first degree, second degree, and third degree. So these are the three main types of uh, clinical burns. So first degree burns are also called superficial, super, Clinical burns and it involves the outer skin. So it involves the outer skin, which is also known as epidermis. So first degree burns involves epidermis of the skin or the top layer of the skin, and it results in the redness of the skin, or it cause painful itching, and usually have no blisters. So no blisters are there. Moving to the option second, that is the second degree one. So second degree one is also called partial thickness one. Partial thickness one. The other name of second degree one is partial thickness one. And it is extended from the epidermis. Epidermis to dermis. So second layer of the skin is also involved here. And it result in the swelling. Result in the swelling and blisters and blisters moving to the option third that is third degree ones so third degree ones are called full thickness ones full full thickness ones and it usually involves uh, fully destroying the epidermis so it fully destroy the epidermis dermis and underneath all the skins all underneath skin and even it uh, reaches to the bone it reaches to the bone area and also the nerves ending also the nerves ending so the main symptoms of third degree burn is that the patient doesn't feel any pain because all the nerves are destroyed so all the nerves are destroyed that's why that's why the patient don't feel any pain and in the case of mineral acid, there is always the second degree burn. So the correct answer for this question is option second, second degree burn. Now 
let's move to the question number three question number three says how do dilution of mineral acid affects their action on tissue so diluting the mineral acid can make mineral acid to act as an irritant irritant or stimulant so when mineral acid is diluted slightly so in case of slightly dilution slightly dilution then mineral acid acts as irritant but in case when the mineral acid is well diluted so in case of well diluted then mineral acid acts as stimulant so now let's take the options option first says slightly diluted acid acts as stimulant so i already told you slightly diluted acids are x as irritant so they are x as irritants so option first can't be true option second well diluted acids x as irritant it is also wrong because they are x as stimulants so option second is also wrong moving to the option third slightly diluted acid x as irritant and this is the correct answer so the correct answer for this question is option number three so in case of uh, slightly diluted it acts as irritant and in case of well diluted then it acts as stimulant si for wds now let's move to the question number four what is the physical property unique to the sulfuric acid and here are the options first is the oily and non-fuming second is fuming with pungent smell and third is surfaced and option four is non-fuming with a pungent smell and the correct answer for this question is option first that is oil and non fume now let's take the explanation part and these are the physical properties of sulfuric acid so sulfuric acids are the colorless odorless with a burning taste and oily and non fume moving to the another mineral acid that is nitric acid so nitric acids are colorless with a pungent choking smell and fuming and the last one, or you can say that the another mineral acids are the hydrochloric acid and it is colorless pungent so taste and fuming now let's move to question number five question number five says which acid has a unique symptom of teeth becoming chalky white and brittle so as i already told you there are three main minerals acid first is sulfuric acid sulfuric acid second is nitric acid and third is hydrochloric acid or hcl so in case of sulfuric acid the teeth becomes chalky becomes chalky white plus brittle so brittle is due to corrosive nature of the sulfuric acid and in case of nitric acid the teeth become yellow or it has yellowish coating and the yellow color of the teeth is due to the formation of xanthro protein xanthro protein which is usually the nitrate protein that turns yellow moving to the third main type of a mineral acid that is hydrochloric acid so it doesn't change anything there is no change in the no change in the teeth or the brittleness of the teeth no change in the color or brittleness so there is no change in that but in case of sulfuric acid the teeth become chalky white and brittle and in case of nitric acid the teeth become yellow and no brittleness is seen no brittleness is seen and in case in case of hydrochloric acid there is no change in color or brittleness so now let's check the options so the chalky white and brittle are seen in the sulfuric acid that is option three so the correct answer for this question is option number three now let's move to the question number six question number six says what is the fatal dose range of nitric acid and i have a trick to learn all the three main types of mineral acid and their fatal doses so but first is the sulfuric acid so sulfuric acid and second is the nitric acid and third is the hydrochloric acid at c so just remember write 5 10 15 and 20 so these all are in the handle so for sulfuric acid the fatal dose is 5 10 and for nitric acid the dose will be the 10 15 and for hydrochloric the fatal dose will be the 15 20. so the range or the fatal dose range for the nitric acid will be 10 to 15 ml and here are the options so 10 to 15 ml that is option second is the correct answer 
Now let's move to the question number seven. Question number seven is a statement question, and statement one says neutralizing agent such as bicarbonate are recommended in the treatment protocol for acid digestion to immediately neutralize the acid effect. And this statement is wrong. This statement is wrong because neutralizing agents such as bicarbonate is avoided. This is because, for example, let's say, uh, let's say a common example of bicarbonate salt is sodium bicarbonate and a HCO3. So in case when the sodium bicarbonate is react with the mineral acid, for example, let's say HCl, then it forms NaCl, which is salt, plus there is a release of CO2. There is a release of CO2 plus there is a formation of water, H2O. So in this case, when the CO2 is formed, then the this CO2 can cause further rupture of the skin, rupture of the skin or the rupture of the lining of the stomach stomach because it leads to the expansion of the stomach which further increases the risk of the stomach rupture so in that case sodium bicarbonate or bicarbonate salts are avoided in case of mineral acid so statement first is wrong moving to the statement second statement second says administrating demosense like olive oil or milk is advisable to provide protective coating to the effective mucous membrane in case of acid digestion so Demosense, demosense are the chemicals or the substances that are used to form a layer over the mucus. So they forms a layer. They forms a layer, protective layer. So they forms a protective layer, protective layer over the mucous membrane. And what does this protective layer do? That it decreases the pain and the inflammation. So it decreases the inflammation and also decreases the contact of the surface or you can say the inner lining of the stomach with the acid. So the common demisense are the olive oils and milk. So statement second is the correct statement. So statement first is wrong and statement second is correct. Now let's check the option. So statement first is false, but statement second is true. So option number four is the correct answer. Now let's move to the question number eight. Question number eight says for managing pain in acid ingestion cases, what medication is suggested? So here are the options. First is the acetamorphin, second is ibuprofen, third is morphin, and fourth is aspirin. So the correct answer for this question is option third, that is morphine. So morphine is a narcotic analgesic. So it is analgesic. Our analgesic are the compounds that relieve pain, that relieve pain. So it decreases the pain and morphine being an opioid. So Morphine is an opioid and it is usually uh, prescribed in case of serve pain. And this is why it is also used to managing pain in case of acid digestion. So the correct answer is option third, that is morphine. Now let's move to the question number nine. Question number nine says, which acid is most commonly used in vitrolage? So vitrolage, vitrolage means uh, as throwing acid, means throwing acid. With intent to harm, with intent to harm. So it is a type of grievous hurt, or the most common uh, type of cases are the acid attacks over the face. So vitrolage is an grievous hurt, and it is explained in IPC 320. IPC. So 320 IPC defines vitrolage and the grievous hurt, and it is also punishable. So vitrolage is also punishable in 326 A IPC. So the punishment related to uh, vitrolage is punishment related to uh, vitrolage cases in which the grievous hurt by acid is listed in 326 A IPC. So 326 A IPC deals with the voluntary causing grievous hurt by acid, and the punishment is about 10 years to life life imprisonment. 10 years to life imprisonment with a fine that is given to the victim. So 326 deals with the punishment of vitrolage and the punishment is usually minimum of 10 years to life imprisonment and a fine which is given to the victim. And apart from this, there is also a section 326B IPC which deals with the punishment related to the attempt to throw acid. And punishment in this type of cases is usually five to seven years, five to seven years with a fine. 
with a fine. So withdrawal reach is a type of grievous hurt which is defined in 320 IPC and uh, the punishment related to withdrawal reach is defined in 326 A IPC and the punishment is usually 10 years to life imprisonment and the fine is given to the victim. But there is another subsection that is 326 B IPC which defines a uh, voluntary uh, attempt to throw the acid and uh, it result in the imprisonment of 5 to 7 years with a fine. So now let's check the options. So the most common type of acid that is used in vitral ages cases are the option 3 that is sulfuric acid. It is the most common type of acid. So option 3 is the correct answer. Now let's move to the question number 10. Question number 10 says following are the steps in the treatment of chemical burns. So what are the steps for treatment of the chemical burns? So the step number 1. So let's evaluate the steps. So step 1 is the washing by water and soap. So it is the first step that is uh, removing all the corrosive substance using water and soap. And after that, the second step, the step second involves application of MgO, magnesium oxide or carbonate or carbonate. So the first step is to remove the corrosive substance and the second step is the application of MgO or carbonate. So what these two chemicals do that it neutralizes the it neutralizes any remains of acid or alkali. So acid or alkali. So it neutralizes that and also gives a protective layer. Gives protective layer which helps in healing. Which helps in healing. And the third step that is last step. Third step is application of antibiotics antibiotics and it is important because because as you know in case of burns there is a higher chance of bacterial infection so what does the antibiotics do that it reduces the chance of bacterial infection so it reduces that chance so these are the three steps that are usually done in the case of chemical burns so now let's take the option so option a washing the parts with the plenty of water and soap so it is the step one Second, applying the raw surface with the antibiotics ornaments and I already told you it is a third step. So it is a third step and option C application or the apply a thick layer of MGO and carbonate. So it is a second step. So first step re uh, removes the corrosive poisons and step second neutralizes any remains of acid and alkali and also gives a protective layer. Uh, which helps in healing and the third is the antibiotics on ornaments so the what does this do that it decreases the bacterial growth or chance of bacterial growth so the correct answer for this question is a c b so a c b now let's take the option so a c b that is option number second is the correct answer and that this presentation is ended i hope you have learned new things today and if you haven't subscribed our channel, please do subscribe. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Just keep studying. And if you have any query, just comment. I will try to reply you as soon as possible. Thank you very much.